Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Happily Ever After, etc. And I am back today with another home project. So today we are working in the laundry room because obviously it needs like a lot of help. <laughs> this and the guest room are my two rooms that haven't been really touched at all. The only thing that's happened in here is putting in my washer and dryer. Everything else is disaster area. And today we are going to start tackling that. So from here to the wall and back is a big indent where you would put like a deep freezer. So it's a, basically a big open area. And this is a bookshelf from my craft room at my last house that is falling apart. It is not the best quality bookshelf, but it's what I have for right now. And I've been using it just for temporary storage. So today I am going to be building a giant built-in floor to ceiling with custom space for my dog's kennels, for my tools. I'm going to have some really cool pull out pegboards for all of my um, hand tools that I use space for laundry detergent, um, fish tank cleaning supplies, all the laundry room things that I have that I need to store, you know, extra paper towels, but that I don't necessarily want out and about. So I've built quite a few things. I built this dog gate covered in a dry and rug right now. Um, but this is definitely the biggest build that I've done. That's not a, a build building plans that I bought. So mom and I designed this and by mom and I, I mean me. Um, this took me like nine hours to design because I have not done it before. Called dad twice, called my best friend three times, called mom twice, but I think we've got all the kinks worked out and I think it's going to be fabulous when it's done. I think there's probably gonna be some um, stumbles along the way. So if you wanna see how we transform this to this, stay tuned. All right, y'all. So we just cut the second board. We're gonna cut the third one. So what we're doing is we're cutting 53 long by 30 deep, and these are gonna be the three big shelves. So these are the hardest parts to cut. I have my Craig um, straight edge rip cut, which is what we just used. You can set it to specific lengths and it helps keep things straight when you don't have a big table saw. Like we, we don't have a big table saw. We want a workshop with a big table saw, but this is what we've got for now. <laughs> saw horses and the Craig rip jump cut. So since we have that set at 18, which is the difference between 53 or 30, 18, which is our four foot board, we're going to go ahead and set this up and we're going to cut this one down 18 all the way to that 53 mark. And then since the rip cut won't cut this middle cut, we'll clamp a board on here and cut straight across um, to make those middle cuts. Then we'll be able to use the Craig the Rip cut for all of the smaller pieces, but this is just the best way to do it for these big cuts when you don't have a table saw or your rip cut to go all the way across. And we could do this cut now and then move it aside, but since the rip cut is already set at 18, it makes more sense to move this board aside, do the cut that is already set for, and then come back and do the third cut. All right, mom, I need some muscle. Do you know anyone? Need a tea break, just a second. Eighteen inches. All right, 
So now we're going to go ahead and mark 53 long. These are the dimensions of my specific space, which is 53 wide in the back by 30 inches deep. So these are the large shelves. They're going to span the entire distance of the cabinet. If your space is a different size, you would build a different size, but. Okay guys, so what we're doing is now that we've cut the 18 across, we've measured all the way down 53, 53, 53, now we're using our square straight edge to make the 53 line so that we know where to clamp our board and cut straight across. So this Craig jig here, the rip cut, has our long measuring tape and it's also square on the sides. So it's really good to use to measure if your board is square and if you're making square measurements. So now, we're going to see this is the straight edge and that is the straight edge. So which side do you want it clamped on? This side. This is one of our other boards. This is a straight edge and that is a straight edge for sure. Those are the factory edges of the board that we know are square, not the parts that we cut, even though we hope those are square and they look square. They might be a tad They off. might be a tad off. We're pretty sure we cut the first one a tad off. Pretty sure we are we're pretty darn sure <laughs> so now yeah see you can't you, this the sled has to be able to go on side. this side okay we keep doing that every single time so our sled is um flush on the right side so we have to put our guide on the right side okay so now we make it flush with the edge <laughs> And we make sure our sled is flush on the line. Is it? And then we butt this up against it. Make sure it's flush with the edge. Not nah, get the jelly. Yeah, I'm gonna come over there. See that it's not. And for this particular long board, I've already made. Um, plans. I will probably have shown them to you at this point, but we'll see. Um, is that still flush? Mm -hmm. Showing exactly what pieces I need to cut out of each board so I know that I need to cut straight all the way across at 53 inches because I need to cut at least one or two shelves out of this side. So. For this piece, we are going to cut straight all the way across to the other side. Here is a closer look at the Craig rip cut. So you keep it level on this end with your straight edge of the board. And then this here, since our blade is on this side, you line up right here. We're doing a 12 inch cut. So the middle of this, this line, line up at 12 and you lock it in place here. And then this is the universal sled. So this is a stopper that you screw in. You know you need to put this square with the stopper and the sled. And then you screw these two pieces on wherever your circular saw has space for them. <laughs> Mine has a little spot here and a little spot here where you can screw it on. So then when you saw straight across your board, it cuts it perfectly straight. It does a good job. Yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and set the camera back up on the tripod so we need to cut two of these straight across. to stand right here. I'm going to hold this. And when you're the holder, you don't ever want to move the saw. You just want to hold the board straight and let her guide the saw. So even when she gets close, I can kind of help just keep it in place, but she's guiding the saw. I am just holding the board steady.
here's our plans. I'm sure I've already showed you these, but um, I'm going to try to make them more professional. These are the ones I'm working off of today. So for the next four boards, five boards, four boards, we have to set the rip cut at um, 13 inches wide. the 3500 and it is supposed to have that turbo boost so I'm really excited to see how that does today. Connect them, go on, twist it at 90 degrees. It's got new little locks. There we go. So once you get it on, lock it in place. Now it's not going to go anywhere. I actually think I want it at about a seven here. So I'm going to twist it. And then this is the turbo. It's set to minimum right now. And we're going to set that to about a seven as well. And we're going to see what those new settings do.
it's clean. So we got the whole space cleaned out. I meant to video it for y'all, but my brother came over to help and it was basically done in 10 minutes with his single-minded motivation. So there wasn't even time to set the camera up. Um, but now we're going to start building. Got some help coming over. I'm gonna just start by marking the studs so that when we put our braces up, we know we need to sink good screws into those studs to support everything underneath. So there should be studs, should be studs at the very least in the corners where the walls meet. So there may not be one in the middle of this. Oh, there's one here. Okay. That must be a two by four on its side. So there's a stud right here. It's face out. And so this eraser is useless. Get a better one. Stud. See if there's another one. Do this mark a lot lighter. It's gonna come out 30 inches from the wall, and this wall is 34 inches. So this stud may or may not be in the cabinet. We're gonna have to measure. I hope it is. There's definitely one in the corner. to be one in the middle of this wall. There's probably another one at the end. No. That's really close. Yeah, that makes more sense. Typically studs are about, I don't know the exact dimensions, but th three or four feet apart. measuring tape so I can measure how far out 30 inches is and get our eraser. Not that I can't paint over that. Basically, I think everything's going to have to be painted with a finished coat of paint once it's ready to go, but you know. All right, so I did get the measuring tape because we're going to need it. See if this is any better. I can't find a really good one. Not perfect. The paint people use for building their houses is just never the best. Yeah, okay, so it, it will be able to go in. This is where my mark is. So 
studs will be able to go in right there. And they'll be able to go in here and here. So it'll be able to go in at least two studs on the short walls and three studs on the back walls, which is really good. I'll take it. I guess let's start putting these up. All right, y'all. My brain hurts, but I think we've got the bottom part sorted. So as you can see, I brought the cages in to measure exactly if my measurements are correct. And they are, but it took a lot of sorting, not because of the measurements, but because of our board here. And you can see this one I messed up. We'll fix it when we paint everything. Um, we needed to notch them out, A, because the cleats needed to fit in so that they will hold the shelves level across the top of the boards. And because we just found it easier for these bottom boards down here. I mean, you're not gonna be able to see those. So I could have taken the molding and sliced it and then fit these in perfectly square to the wall. But I found it easier just to use a little um, jigsaw or I use my little Dremel saw max to notch these out um, and therefore fit it over the molding. For the front ones, I will probably have to cut the molding so you get that really flush, clean edge for the face of the piece. But for that ones, we just notch these over the molding. So now we're going to go ahead, can't see me, and start attaching the cleats into the studs. So we've got the long cleat along the back and the side cleats here that will fit in on the side obviously right there it's very attractive and these we will make sure go into the studs very securely because we want this this is basically what's going to hold most of the weight of our board along with our middle supports so start doing that Yeah, that's pretty level, which is good because, I mean, these aren't going to really change. So I'm going to go ahead and put the back cleat in. And in order to do that, I'm going to move this. And when you're shooting dry nails into drywall, if you shoot them straight in, they can come straight out. But if you shoot them up and down and cross them, they lock, they're much harder to pull out. It just gives you a better base. All right, now I'm going to screw straight into that stud. So see where I marked the stud here. Trying to change the drill bit on the brad nailer. It's not a thing. So I went in the other room and I drilled, I could have set this up before I started, pocket holes. 
four on the top of each of these and that along with the brad nail gun is going to secure the top of the shelf to these supports once we get them in the right place and square and level to the floor especially this bottom shelf the dog kennels will be underneath these and then on top of them are going to be my miter saw and my wet saw so those are very heavy I need these to be sturdy to hold those as well as they're the base of the entire cabinet so we need to be structurally sound <laughs> so let's go ahead and get them in place we'll have to measure and square and all that all right. so if y'all didn't catch that we're gonna put the shelf on top here and then we'll measure for level we'll check for square to the floor and then i will sink some brad nails in the top here to hold it in place and then I will use the pocket screws to drill up into the shelf and those are very sturdy that will hold everything a-okay. Y'all are gonna see the back of my head. All right you two people. Mom did you just leave me a voicemail? She's in the other room, y'all. Okay, y'all, so this is our drawer slide. They're very confusing. If you know how to use drawer slides, please come here and help me. But on the back of this, there's a little lever that says release with an arrow. So I pulled that over and now you can pull this out. So this is the part this way, we're gonna forget that. This is going to mount to our actual drawer. For some reason, they're sticky. This is going to mount to the side of our piece here. So we're gonna go ahead and, luckily we didn't mount this on the sides or the back yet, so we're gonna move it up. We're going to mount these one at a time to each side, level and flush, and then we will mount these to the board, and then we will figure out how to put it all together and help. brad nail in just to hold it in place now we're going to make sure it's level because the support on there it seems to be causing problems and then we'll sink the screws in make sure they're in the steps only i only painted the top and not the bottom so got to remember
All right, y'all. Welcome to my very professional workshop. So the next step of the project is my beautiful metal pegboards here. And I'm going to put these on drawer slides. There we go. So since they're going on drawer slides and not directly on the wall, I do need to mount these little pieces of wood inside of the braces. So right now what I'm doing is taking my wood and I'm cutting notches so that they fit perfectly under the edges here. So once I get these all cut down, we can screw them in place and then add the drawer slides and put them up in the cabinet. But as professional as this little work area is, I'm doing all of my sawing out on the porch on my actual workbench. So let's head out there and do the wood slides for the other three boards. All right, y'all. So here's all of our boards. We've got enough for three more. So should be two, four, six. You can see we've got the painted side. So this is what's going to show through the holes of the pegboard. And then we've got the back. This is what we're cutting into. And I'm just going to use my little guides here. My workbench has been outside for a couple days, so it really needs to be hosed down, but not going to hurt anything. And then I'm just going to use my little multi-tool to cut those notches out. And actually, I cut these boards to 16 inches exactly with the miter saw the other day. Um, and since the pegboards themselves are 16 inches, that means they're the same size and I'm cutting off just a little sliver of the end so that they actually fit within the confines of the pegboard. They can't be the same size to do that. One of y'all should have told me, but it's an easy enough fix since we have to cut the notches anyways. If the miter saw was still let up, I'd just cut it off that way, but it's easy enough to just zip it with this baby. Let's do this. Whew humid in Alabama. I actually bought this to cut the molding in the room so that I can put the trim on either side, but this is so much faster than a coping saw to cut these. I'm pretty happy with myself. I'm going to do all of these notches and then I will switch to the straight blade and go through them this way. Okay, I'm switched to the flat blade and now we're going to take the other the other half out. I don't know what to call it. Yeah, I had a feeling the battery was dying because uh, it usually cuts through like butter. Let me grab the other one. much easier with a full charge battery. All right, let's go put these on the pegboard. Mm. All right, y'all, so I'm back in my super professional workshop and we are going to put all these blocks in. So starting with this one, you can see this is the one I showed you at the beginning that already has the wood block pushed in place. 
going to use a drill bit that's just a little bit smaller than my screws. Now the screws that came with this are meant to go through here and into the wall. So they are, I don't know where I put it. I think in my pocket. Yeah. Don't think you're going to be able to see this well, but do you see they're quite a bit longer. So I went and special bought these. They are half an inch as opposed to these, which are probably an inch and a half. That way they only go into my wood here. But if you just drill them into the woods without drilling a pilot hole, the wood will split. I tested that out for you, 100% positive. So I'm just gonna drill a pilot hole on each side. and then we can put our screws in to hold this in place. And it is, I mean, they're pretty snug because we, I only cut off, cut off a bit to make sure that it fits real snug inside of this, but the screws hold it in place better than, than just leaving it snug. There's one. two. All right. So now that that's in, we got our drawer slide. These came with itty bitty screws that I just put in this box here. Cause I'm afraid I'm going to lose them. Otherwise teeny tiny screws. And the way that you install them is here's the slide. You pull it out, flip it over. And on the back here, is a little release valve and when you press that you can pull the front off here so i'm going to make sure we install it the same site as that one so this way so that they both slide the same way and i'm installing them flush to the inside so flush to this inside part not the top that way they have a little bit of space to slide without being at the top. Make sure it is in the middle. And then we will put our screws in. Now, with the larger pieces, I did um, tape them down and clamp them, the larger drawer pulls on the cabinet, but these I found stay in place pretty well just with pressure. Where did I put that? Now, if I had known that these had holes in the middle, I could have bought a third um, drawer pull and a third piece of wood and put three drawer pulls on these. However, these are graded to hold over a hundred pounds. Um, so they should be fine with just two, three would have been sturdier. Now, in order to install these in the cabinet, we have to extend these and drill through these holes into the cabinet. So you do not have to put these back on, but I find it is just easier. That is how the back should look. 
So keep in mind that the way we're doing this, they're going to pull out from the wall. So I need two with the drawer pulls this way and two the other way because they're going to be every other one. And it'll make sense when it's in the cabinet. We'll point that out to you so that you can make sense. But essentially we need two with the drawer pulls going that way and two with the drawer pulls going this way for this specific design. So I'm going to do another one just like this and then we'll flip it and we'll do two the opposite way. And if you are attaching these directly to the wall, the hardware from wall control comes in between the boards. I don't know why I couldn't figure that out. It took me a while to find it. it makes total sense now that you think about it. There's the different length of the screws. Benny and Sugar are impressed. Also, like, comment, subscribe, look at this video so that I can uh, buy a work shed, not do this anymore. Just say, Mom, we'll be right back. All right, y'all, so we are back in the room where dreams go to die. So now we are doing the main cabinet. So this is where all the pegboards will be. But in the back, since the pegboards are only 16 inches wide, I have space in the back that I don't want to go to waste. And since this particular section is going to be 34 inches tall, I don't necessarily need a 12 inch by 34 tall inch section. So I'm going to hang two long shelves just along the back 12 inches of this cabinet. So that way I can put paint cans and other storage, things that I don't need all the time, but I do need to store on those back shelves. So we are going to go ahead and measure those, hang the cleats, hang the shelves, and then we will hang, put in the support and the cleats for the very top shelf and then that's the whole frame. Then we'll hang the pegboards. And from there, we'll see. We'll see where we get today. Um, everything will be finished with trim and eventually doors. But that may be a project for a different day. We're going to go ahead and start on the cleats for the back shelves. Okay.
Okay, y'all, so now we are on to the pegboard part. So, this is the middle support that we had in the other room, and the pegboards with the slides will go on either side and then on the wall. So we are going to mount the drawer slides to this and then they will slide in and out. We'll just have to figure it out. All right, y'all, so now what I did was I used a spare piece of wood to draw a line on the molding and my little multi-tool to cut this piece of molding out of the molding. That way I can slide my trim piece right on down and cock the edges. Now this is just a spare piece of trim, but can see how it fits. I'll be honest, I'm pretty excited about it. We'll have the trim all the way up. So now I need to cut the molding at the ceiling so that I can install a piece all the way down and the other side. All right, y'all, so I did some work last night in the dark, so it's not filmable, but I wanted to fill these cracks. So I made a paste with some wood glue and some sawdust, filled in the gap here. I'm gonna sand it down now and then come in and fill any uneven gaps that are left with a bit of speckle. And then I am going to start or finish, I started um, caulking everything so that all the gaps are filled in. You can see I did uh, this corner here and you see how much better that looks 
than this corner here. So we are going to just keep on working. This is all finishing touches, but I mean, this is smooth and smackled already. Once I paint across that, it'll look like one piece as opposed to these gaps here. So that's what we want. One seamless cabinet. All right, y'all. So now I'm going to start sanding and, and spackling and all of that. Um, I just filmed the whole part that you missed. So I started sanding this with the big guy. Now I'm going to use my little multi-tool to get in the corners here. Um, but what I told you that apparently I wasn't recording, I was just talking to myself, is that I've been looking online for the perfect size container for this little drawer that I made. It's eight inches wide by 18 inches tall. And that is kind of apparently a hard dimension to find for storage containers. Everything I could find for eight inches tall was only like four or five inches tall, little short things. And this drawer specifically is designated for fish tank decorations and any extra um, dog things that I might have. I'm not sure exactly what. It may end up being all fish tank decorations. So long plants and um, rocks, things that typically are taller. So eight by four wouldn't work. Look what I found. They're technically trash cans, keep clean, but they were $10. They are eight by 15, so they are the perfect dimension, and they're plastic, so I can put all my like plants and rocks in here. I'm thinking maybe one for all my spare plants and one for all my spare decorations, but we'll see. We may change that up depending on these boxes here are all my spare fish tank parts because I haven't actually put my tank up yet. So we're just going to have to open those and see what needs to go where, but I bought three of them for 10 bucks. I wasn't sure if three would fit in here, but only two fit. They're the perfect size and they were only 10 bucks each. So obviously I would have rather this drawer have been bigger, but the two outside dimensions are for the dog kennels. So those were set dimensions. I only had room in the middle for a small opening, which is why I made it a drawer. I figured if I just shoved stuff in the back of this small compartment, I would never get it out. Drawer pulls are best. Drawer slides. I keep seeing drawer pulls. Back to sanding. Alright. Now, I went to the store. This looks like a really big container stack hole. And now, it looks like a very small container spec. If I need more, I'll get more. So while the wood glue and sawdust mixture fills in the gaps, it just tends to be a little rougher. I found it's not very smooth. So you sand it down as much as you can, and then I just fill everything in with some spackle and that gives it a nice smooth top layer um, that then you can sand with just a really fine grit sandpaper if there's anything on top, but makes it look so much better.
All right, so I am going to let all of that spackle dry. I'll probably come back in 30, 40 minutes, sand it smooth, and then paint the entire face. Then we can cock it and we will be done. I can start to organize it and put all my stuff in and, and not be doing this anymore. I'm really, really, really happy with how it's turning out. And I'm really actually very proud of it. This is the first big build that I've done that I've designed myself. Like this was completely custom. So I think it looks really good for someone who's never built a cabinet before in their lives. So it'll be even better once I get the doors on it, but that's going to be a different problem for a different person. Future me. All right, y'all, we are literally on the last step of the project. I'm so excited. So we have caulked, painted, um, everything is done except for these inside edge pieces here are still just the edges of the plywood. So I picked up a bit of band tape. I don't know the official name that says it's veneer edging. And it is pre-glued, so you basically put it over the edge, you iron it on. I've got my little mini easy press here. And then it takes your edges from uncut and ugly to beautiful. I've never used this before, but I've watched some videos. It looks easy enough. Famous last words, right? So after this, we are finished. We'll move on to the next part, which is organizing, putting things on here. <laughs> so a few people have asked me while I was doing this, besp besides, despite, that's a new word, besides and despite, despite, the tape holding this band edging on is really strong. Besides the drawer holes being really cool, what is the point of putting the pegboards on the drip, the drawer pulls? And for me, it is it is twofold. Um, this is a thirty inch deep cabinet, and so while I can reach the back and the tops, it's a lot easier if these come out to reach things at the top for me. Um, Taller people probably wouldn't have that problem. And I'm not small, I'm five, six. Regardless, the other part is that this is the slim profile. I have a whole system of the wall control shelves and pegs and things like that to hang things on here. So once I start hanging things on either side, there's going to be a very slim profile in the middle to get to those back shelves. Now the back shelves are going to be for storage for things that I'm not utilizing on a daily basis um, but I still do need to get back there occasionally so by being able to pull these out that will give me more room to get to the back essentially and then I don't lose all of that storage space so that's a uh, how I'm justifying it okay so 
essentially says cut it half an inch longer than it needs to be. Preheat iron, which I did, it is ready to go. Position the edging, slowly press the iron over, check to see if glue is melting. Keep moving along. It says while the glue is still hot, press the veneer down with a roller. I don't have a little wallpaper roller, so again, I just grabbed my Cricut brayer. Same, same concept. Allow edging to cool completely, and then you can trim off the excess. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do this level with the top, and then I can come back and trim off the excess, but that may be a project for a different day. I'm going to get started trying, and I'm going to work left to right. I guess we need to trim this first. are the same length, so I'm just going to measure out the same amount. Perfect. Let me move y'all a little closer so you can see how this goes. You can see the difference here in the top and the bottom with the band edging without. So much better, right? This is another good reason why the pegboards slide out so I can put the band edging on because without it, I would have had to do this before I put the middle supports in and I did not think of that. literally copious amounts of things. You remember the before picture, I'll flash it up on the screen if you don't, but um, copious amounts of things to unpack and organize and put away in this cabinet. <sighs> Starting with the peg words, because that's the most exciting part. <laughs> So if you want to stick around, I'm going to do a whole separate video for organizing this bad boy, putting all my tools away, putting all my dog things away. Hi, Cinnamon. They are going to start sleeping in here. They're thrilled about it. And I'm just, I am beyond thrilled. Here are my plans. Y'all, this is like literally 
the first cabinet I've ever built that I designed and it's huge. And as you can see, there was quite a few uh, mock-ups before I came to the final design. And then these are all of my cut lists of what pieces I needed. And then I laid out my three four by eight boards and configured how to cut each piece out. And that is how I did this. And it, it's a cabinet, like it's a real life cabinet that my dogs can sleep in and I can store tools in and I can put laundry detergent in. It's a much better use of space, especially the, the old bookshelf that was here before was from my craft room at the last house. And it was inexpensive when I bought it. My brother came over to help me clear all of that out and the bookshelf literally fell apart when we tried to take it out of here. There were two of them. The other one flew out of my uncle's truck on the way from the storage unit and just disintegrated. So this will last forever. <laughs> I don't know if forever is the right word, but it will last as long as the house does. So long enough for me. I'm very, very, very excited about it. If you've watched this far, thank you very much. Like, comment, subscribe, come back. Um, I will have very shortly up a video on how to organize this or how I organized it. And I have two big boxes of wall control special pegs that they've sent me to organize all my tools. So if you want to see that, I will leave a link below. That should be up very soon after this video because I'm doing both of them together. Um, however, eventually I'm going to put doors on this cabinet. Obviously not on the two dog sections, but um, this will have doors. These two sections are going to have doors and the bottom section will have no doors. <laughs> so, and then the drawer face will have a door because why wouldn't it? So that will be another section, another project. I am contemplating between building the doors and buying them. I think I'm going to build them because I want them to match the farmhouse dog doors that I built in here. So I think building is probably the solution. So if you want to stick around after my best friend's wedding, I will build some doors and put them on here. But I'm probably, especially at the top, going to have to throw up another trim piece to separate the two doors up there and probably added another couple supports so that the faces here can support the width of the doors, the weight of the doors. But that will all be in the next video. Hope you liked this one, if you did. I do. Bye. P.S. Before I go, there is an electrical outlet behind this kennel. So I did plug an extension cord in. You can see it there, I drilled a hole and drilled another hole here so that I can plug things in in the tool cabinet. Don't forget about that part. Also, how cute would it be if I made custom name tags for the kennels with my Cricut? Bye, y'all. <laughs>